Hello friends, welcome back to the Selenium tutorial website. In the previous sessions, we learned how to download and install Java. Also, we learned how to configure the Java editor Eclipse. In this session, we will learn how to configure Selenium web driver with Eclipse. Now, a question would be coming to your mind. Basically, what is a Selenium web driver? Uh, to explain that, I'll be making a, a different tutorial altogether. But the focus of this tutorial would be on the configuration part as to how to download these web driver files and configure it with Eclipse. So let's start. So first of the first step is we need to download the Selenium web driver jar files. We'll so from where to download. So this is the standard Selenium HQ.org website. As you can see on the screen, here you'll get everything you need to start with Selenium automation. So on this website, I'll go to the download tab. Now I'll scroll down. When I scroll down, I come to a section called Selenium Client and Web Driver Language Bindings. So here you have different options, Java, C Sharp, Ruby, Python, JavaScript. Now we have selected Java for our tutorials. So we would be downloading the Java files. So I would click on the first download option, the Java download option over here and download those web driver jar files. The download has started. So when the download will get completed, you will have this kind of a zip file in your download folder. Next, what we'll have to do is do an extract. What I'll do is right click here and do extract all and click on this extract button. So when the extraction gets completed, you will have this kind of a folder within the drive where you selected to extract. I will double click on it, move into the folder. Another folder is there. I'll move into that. And here I could see like these two Selenium Java 2.44.0 and Selenium Java 2.44.0 sources. These are the two jar files which have been downloaded and we'll, requ we'll be requiring to configure these jar files within our Selenium project in Eclipse. Also, uh, if you would go in this libs folder, there are a bunch of jar files here as well. So we need to include these jar files as well within our Selenium project on Eclipse. So next step is we would be configuring these jar files on Eclipse. So let's do that. So now we would start Eclipse and start with the configuration. I will now open the Eclipse. It will take few seconds to launch. It will ask for a workspace. So I would keep it as D drive Selenium. You could select a workspace of your choice. Basically, I have explained this workspace in my previous tutorial. It is the place where your Java projects, the code files would be stored. So now I'll do an OK. And once Eclipse will launch, I would be creating a new Java project and I would be configuring the Java project with the Selenium web driver jar files, which we just downloaded. So here on the Eclipse editor, I would be creating a new Java project. The steps are same file, new Java project. Now a new window will open where it will ask to enter a project name. So you, you can see this. So since we are doing configuration, I would name this project as selenium underscore config. Else I'll just press on the finish button. So we have created a Java project. Now the ask is to configure this Java project with the Selenium web driver jar files. This is very simple. What I'll do is go to the project, right click on the project, select the option build path within build path. Select the last option, configure build path. I click over there. On this new window, I will move to the libraries tab, the third, third tab. 
you could see over here on this tab on the right hand side there are there is an option called add external jars i would click over here when i do that this window would ask me the path from where i need to configure the external jars so i will navigate to that path so these are my jar files which i need to configure i would select them click on the open button when i do that i could see these files are added in my project similarly we have to add the other files which are there in the libs folder process is the same once again i select all the files i do a control a and click on the open button you can see these files get added over here and i click on this okay button here when i do that on the left hand side you could see something called reference libraries if i expand it i would be able to see these jar files which i configured right just now so these are the jar files which we downloaded from the selenium hq site and now we have successfully configured these jar files on eclipse on our selenium project so this was about the configuration we have come we have been completed with the configuration now next what we'll do is we'll do a simple recording on the selenium ide we'll convert the recorded script into java and then execute that java script from this selenium project on eclipse so let's do that now we'll go to the mozilla firefox browser to do the recording on selenium ide so on the firefox browser i would start the selenium ide i would click this red button to start recording i would enter a url for example www.gmail.com here i would be click i would be clicking on this create account button we won't be actually creating a new account we would be entering only couple of fields just to record a few steps on the ide here i am entering any text for example first name as test1 last name as test2 that's it we won't be doing a complete registration this is just a demo example to show how to do the recording and then convert it into java so we have completed these steps so now we'll see on the selenium id that these steps would have been recorded so now let's check on the selenium ide so as you can see these are the steps which have been recorded i'll just maximize it so everyone could view it so in the first step we are opening gmail.com site we are clicking on the create account button and on the next page we are typing the first name as test1 and last name as test2 so we have successfully recorded so i'll click the stop recording button over here the next step is we have to convert these recorded steps into java how to do that go to options format we'll select java j unit 4 web driver we do click on okay over here and you can see the entire selenium scripts has been converted into java it is this java file which we would be using it in the eclipse to execute the same steps which were performed on the ide so let's do that so we'll once again move back to eclipse in our selenium config project we'll create a new class within the source folder now this source folder gets created by default whenever you create a new java project so i would right click here new class a window would open and it would ask for a class name i would give the class name as selenium test and click on the 
Finde ich So the class has been created. Now what I'll do is go to the IDE. I'm copying the entire Java code over here. I'm doing a control A and control C and I am blindly pasting it onto the class file which I create just now created. So on the class file again I'm doing a control A and pasting the entire Java code which we copied from the Selenium IDE. So when we do that, if you would see like on line number one, there is some kind of an error. This red mark indicates error. Basically, this error is because of this package com.example.test. Whenever we convert Selenium script through the IDE into Java, by default, it takes this package com.examples.test. And if we see on the left hand side, we do not have this package available over here. We have not created any packages. So to avoid this error, to get rid of this error, I'll just delete the first line. So you can see this error has been removed. Now if you would see, there is another red mark on line number 12. And it, it if I scroll my mouse over there, then it gives me a fix, like what are the available fixes. This is, Eclipse is a beautiful tool. It itself tells us like what are the possible errors and how to remediate them. So whenever we are copying and pasting the Java code from Selenium IDE, by default, it takes the class name as class untitled. And here we have the class name, which we have named it as Selenium underscore test. Because of this mismatch, this error is shown over here. So to avoid this error, we have to rename this class to Selenium underscore test. So we need not type it. If I just hover over here, and select the second option rename type to selenium test the editor would automatically do that and the error would be resolved as you can see on the screen now there are no errors and now we are in a position to execute this script so to execute this script right click anywhere on the screen you will have this option run as and select j unit now, when we were converting, if you remember from the IDE, we had selected JUnit web driver because of which we would be executing this script as a JUnit. Now, what is a JUnit test and how it differs from a normal test? I would be taking a separate tutorial on that. This tutorial focuses only on the configuration. So when, if this execution gets successful, then we would know that the configuration part has been done. So now I'll execute it. I'll just click over here. Now it will start executing basically within few seconds. It would launch the browser. You could see on the left hand side runs one out of one which means internally it has started executing it may take few seconds to launch the browser and perform the operations but internally it is actually executing So as you can see on the screen, the script has launched the browser. Now it would navigate to gmail.com, which we had used during recording. You could see it is connecting. Now it has typed the URL. The page is actually getting loaded. Now on this page, the script would click on the create account button
you can see on the left hand side create account page is loading so it has actually loaded now now it would enter the names like test1 and test2 in the first name and last name respectively and then close the browser so it has done that and if you would see on the screen on the left hand side there would be some kind of an indication whether the test run has been completed successfully or not and now you can see it is green which means the test has been completed successfully it has actually passed and we have we could now conclude that we have successfully configured the eclipse java project with selenium web driver successfully guys this was about the configuration which i talked about so we have completed the entire configuration thing in the previous two tutorials we saw how to install java then we saw how to configure eclipse and finally we saw how to configure eclipse with the selenium web driver so these three tutorials in entirely completes the selenium configuration part thanks guys for joining i'll be creating more tutorials on selenium hope to see you soon thanks guys